السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله سيدي is it true that Dajjal will be an imam claiming Islam what <laughs> Is it true that the Dajjal will be an Imam claiming Islam? Fa'azu billah shaitan bismillah He comes uh, under the… as a… for a different community. And he comes as their imam, not imam but their leader for war. Once he's victorious in their war, he'll come as a general and he's kuhanim, that his relationship is Sayyid of Bani Israel and he'll be victorious in battles. And after his victorious battles, he'll claim that he's a Prophet of Allah after he claims he's a Prophet of Allah he'll claim that he's Hashim, that he is God. So this has nothing to do with Islam. But the fitna of his power is, is so great upon the earth that it's by Allah's will that we'll convince a fitna from every community will be involved with him. So, Muslim leaders will fall under that fitna, Christian leaders will fall under that fitna and all of humanity will be falling under that fitna. And he'll move the earth and traverse his… his grabbing of people will traverse the earth. So these are the dangers and they'll hear sounds and these sounds will lock the heart and souls of people to follow him. And Tariqah's realities and Mawlana's realities is that inshaAllah when those sounds begin that they'll hear Mawlana Shaykh's voice and he'll block their sound and block what Dajjal is trying to do for the students of sincerity. The madad, the tafakkur, the contemplation, all of this training is exclusively to reach to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi That's why under Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah it's the only source of this true teachings. Mujaddidi they have a different system that not anything similar to Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghassari Sultan al-Awliya. So, the Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah from Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani to Sultan Awshi Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, that is a very powerful line to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi salam inshaAllah and that these are very specific trainings for students on how to train their heart and their soul to save them from fitna, from fitna what we call mass confusion. And we see that and it samples already that people are so confused by fear. So all it was is a one-eyed box put out a fear and told everybody, run to this medicine to save yourself from the fear. But the medicine itself was that what you should have been fearing and its long-term effects and dangers and difficulties completely unknown what it will do to the reproductive system and to, to the internal organs and DNA of uh, insan from humanity. And that is just one sample that uh, people will be their worst enemies running towards a fire thinking it is their salvic. So already we saw that on mass scales, people were running taking one, two, three, five, six different types of medicines, asking for more doses, more doses, thinking that was their salvation. And that's why Prophet taught us at every level 
whatever dajjal is offering you of salvation and peace and health, know that it's Jahannam. He's not caring for the health of people, he's not caring for organic people to live longer. Their plan is seven out of six to be dead. So if we understood that then no organic food by any corporation is, is not uh, interested in your health. The only one interested in your health is you and Allah So if you want true organic plant your own vegetables, make your own food. Other than that make du'a on everything, everything under the, under the hands of dajjal now. Make du'a, only the du'a can change a reality of something and make it to be angelic, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can you kindly explain the concept of asking madad if someone died, how can he help? Mm -hmm. You have to buy three copies <laughs> of Timeless Reality. Is this from someone new? Uh, yeah, looks like it. Okay, yeah, if you're coming new, no problem, buy four copies. <laughs> that way you, you can show that you're committed to it. So if you're coming new then you have to understand from beginning of our teachings that we teach from the world of light and the power of the soul. And whatever people have been taught is mainly from the body and physicality. If we believe that the physicality is, is not the power, physicality is not God's interest. The soul is what God is interested in. You clean your physicality so that your, sto your soul stays perfected and fragranced because a bad physicality, dirty physicality will bring nefarious creatures that will, will affect the soul. So the objective of washing was not the body but was the soul. The vehicle that you're walking in, if it's dirty, smelly and unclean, all negative energies will attack your soul. That's what Allah was worried about, not that your body is, is, is clean but that vehicle that you're using to carry the soul, the soul is the precious cargo. And that's why Allah describes that if you see them dead, these martyrs and these people whom they fought in the way of Allah and one form of fighting is to come against your ego and your character, don't deem them dead in the grave but they are very much alive. Means what? The soul is alive and has much more power and ability than the physicality. So these, these, there are many movies or animes that can give people an understanding because they need graphic sort of perception, they need to put something through their eyes to perceive that. So Doctor Strange and these more modern movies that come out teach that there's something from the soul, much more powerful. If you can hear through your soul, well that's something eternal. You know what the capability of hearing from your soul and if you can see from your soul that's why when you meditate you begin to have spiritual experiences. That's so that you can gain your faith because you say, this is astonishing. I'm nobody and as soon as I'm meditating I'm feeling energies, I'm hearing whisperings, I'm, I'm getting some sort of a sense of opening. So imagine then people whom day and night were trained in that reality, that they're operating at a wave and that's why the duality of light and science teaches you have a particle. That can do very little but the wave form can be many places at the same time. So just the science of it you have to understand everything has a wave reality. The wave reality is not limited to one location. So a living person who has power over their light, they can be in thousands of locations at the same time. An old school teaching was take a candle or a light source and put a box over that light, darken out your room, put a light over a box so you don't see anything. Make one hole in the box, the light will come out from one hole because you want to understand the power of your soul. And most people operate like that, just their light comes out from one place, this is their physicality. 
But those whom open the power of their soul put many holes in the box now. Put one in the front, one in the back, one in the side, one in the right. So that same light will illuminate all four directions now. And that's for us just to understand that the soul is not confined to the body. Once you've trained to lower the grasp of the body and bring out the reality of the soul, then that soul is very powerful. They can hear into the seven heavens, they can reach anyone wherever they are. While the shaykh is alive he doesn't need to be dead for that, that they merely can send their soul out to reach to the heart of a person. And they can send their energy out to that person and begin to make their heart palpitate because their energy is coming and the person begins to feel their heart palpitating. So it means there's many, many realities of the souls and the capability of the soul. So since we teach only about light, this is why all, all this teaching is very specific to light. That's why then you have to learn our system of meditation, connecting with the living shaykhs so that you can be trained on how to open your light, open your power of your soul. Then you begin to realize that all those whom died in a state of being open, they're very much accessible. They didn't go anywhere. There's people from thousands of years are sitting still in that world of light. They didn't die, there's no death in light, only the body dies. So in this world of light they're very much alive. If they were good God gave them a freedom. People can connect with them, learn from them. If they were bad they're confined under punishment, their physicality and their light didn't achieve the power of that light to be of service and to be of benefit to humanity. So those whom passed, their physicality passed but their souls are ever present. And that's like a cartoon you would watch as avatar, that there is a state and a realm of light in which if you connect they're all alive. And those are the masters who open their reality. And those whom are pious and, and good they also have a similar but not as strong. And that's what's so important. That brings us on to the question that when we were ending somebody had a question about death. And that's why the most important aspect of our life is our death. So if you want to see who's close with Divinely Presence and you cut out all their garbage teachings because the mouth of people say many lies. But look to people for their actions to see who they are and what they believe in, right? So the highest form of belief in the Divine is your state of death because this is your union into the heavens, this is your marriage into the heavens. So how you treat your dead is a symbol of your true faith. So when we're teaching that you're going to go back to the Divinely Presence, your soul is going to have a union into the heavens and that your body is going to go into its accounting and its, and its oceans of accounting and difficulty or ease, then of course you're going to wash the person, you're going to perfume the person, you're going to make sure that they are taken care of and not been in difficulty during the washing and the cleansing process and they have to be buried immediately so that no creature tries to empty or to enter into their physicality. The minute the body touches the earth it becomes sealed from any type of creature entering. If you leave that dead body on the earth and they do this for voodoo areas and they don't bury the body, they leave it, the jinn and nefarious creatures will enter into that body and begin to make it to move because they're looking for a vehicle to operate. So there's a hikmah and a wisdom that immediately the body has to be washed. You have to pray over it, this, party, this person is leaving and departing back to the Divinely Presence. And as a result how, how beautifully you're treating that one whom is going back into the heavens is a sign of the reality of your faith, that your faith is real, the practices that you believe are real because you're accepting and the reality of the mannerisms of how to be greeted by God's Divinely Kingdom is important. Now you take that body and you burn it, well that tells you whatever those people were teaching of love and peace, why the heck would they be burning this guy's body and soul? When, when all our teaching is you feel everything. Death is a state of, of a very high consciousness 
So if you don't believe, next time when you're asleep have a loved one come with a lighter and just put a fire under your toes and see if you don't scream uh, unimaginable pain. So what do you think death is? Every sleep is a station of death. Every time we sleep it's a state of death. It's a symbol of what's coming for us when we sleep, a permanent sleep. So yeah you can't burn the person, now they don't even want to burn, they want to throw them in acid to get rid of them or they put their bodies on, on a mountain side and let the birds to eat them. This has nothing to do with Divine, has nothing to do with the heavenly kingdom. Whatever they talked about on earth was just lies and mischief. How you treat the body on its death is a symbol of how real your faith was and what your faith was about, inshaAllah. <coughs> as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Could you please elaborate in the use of hellfire energy used for healing? Hellfire energy in the use of healing, <laughs> those are two different things. There's a fire in healing and then there are angels of hellfire guarding. So you can kind of brought everything together into one, those are different. That for pious souls one of the angels that must be assigned to guard them is Sayyidina Malik, our master Sayyidina Malik salam. And he is a guardian of Jahannam, is the angel that deals with hell. And under his command are Zabani and these are the angels that inflict harm and punishment of the grave and punishment for anything trying to enter into paradise. So our paradise is only as beatific as Allah's power to Sayyidina Malik, otherwise hell would be, the heaven would be overrun by demons. So the security, and these are the security forces for the heavens. And anybody trying to achieve piety on earth means under, they have to be under the guidance of the shaykhs who have these understandings and a part of the training is then the implementation of these angels. The Sayyidina Malik when these author authorized individuals are training then Sayyidina Malik will begin to assign guardians over that soul. That they are now learning and absorbing the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. So as a result Sayyidina Malik as salam has to guard over them from shaitans and devils that want to harm that individual. So then the shaykh has a guardianship and, and a protection for their reality that Allah gives to them that these are from the power of the Zabanis, that they are fierce against shayateen and the devils are very scared of Zabanis. So this is a, a, a protection from Allah that's why when they have the Nashbandi Taweezes, the Nashbandi symbols, these are all within the armament of the tariqah because they work for the kingdom, these are the servants of the kingdom and as a result that all of their armament, their Taweezes, their, 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 all of what's been given to them, their awrads, their zikrs, then they adorn themselves with these protections. So the immensity of that power and the protection that comes with all of this is very intense. Somebody emailed that their nephew, a little child is screaming and yelling and seeing things, is, is catching a fever, a cold and starting to see things and scream about things and, and this, this, is, this is all that we've been talking about. That these things will become more and more fierce upon this earth and more and more visible. That's why then the symbols and the taweezes, the necklaces, the taweezes in the home, the stickers on the windows, stickers on the car, everything because it's a sign of belief. So when the shaykhs are teaching it you try to do and be preactive, not reactive, proactive, not reactive. Means go out and do your stuff ahead of time, get your taweezes, play your salawats in the house. Put the calligraphies of salawat and Muhammad Rasulullah so that everyone in that house knows that you're Muhammadiyoon. 
that you have a tremendous ishq and love for Prophet that you have the ta'weezes of awliyaullah and upon yourself, upon your car, upon your children and this is a sign of belief. And when you have that and you start to hear about these outbreaks and you know horrific experiences that people will have then that's when you start saying, I think you should contact this shaykh, go to their store website, get your taweezes, get all the things that you need. Send people the link for the taweez, don't just send us an email saying, oh my relatives are screaming and yelling, what are we supposed to do about that? You have to get them to get the taweezes, get people to believe, propagate, send them a message, look at this shaykh, watch his videos. So that's what's important, means that every condition Allah will put a condition hoping people will go through a door. Some people are pious, they say, oh I don't need a fire under my thing to burn for me to run to the door, I get up and I'm going through that door, no problem Ya Rabbi. But astonishing that many people don't and they actually want the difficulty to prove to them, oh my god all these difficulties, now I'm going to go through that door. So these are just the symbols, anybody has emails of people in difficulty? Send them links for the store, send them links for the talks, for the videos, for the shaykhs so that this may be a calling for that person to actually go to the shaykh. Not that you're going to email and the, the shaykhs are going to make a du'a and make everything stop, that wasn't the objective. You know, if Allah wanted to stop He wouldn't have let it happen. But you have to go and think to yourself, why Allah letting this happen? Oh because you should be with the tariqahs, maybe there is a cure a remedy that you're not doing. The remedy is not in the emailing, take this problem away. The remedy is that the person should be introduced to the tariqah, to the videos, to the shaykh, to where the taweezes are so that they too can come to this najat and to this fountain and to drink and to eat from this fountain inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum as Sayyidi, can the taweez we wear around the neck ever become compromised in any way? Yeah, if you tear it apart and get it wet and, and dissolve it in, in you know, in, in moisture it may dissipate and fall apart. So then you get a new one. Other than that it, the taweez is good to go for, for 25 years, doesn't matter. There's no clock on it and the time doesn't run out and alhamdulillah no battery. <laughs> so it just inshaAllah it keeps going, inshaAllah. But the kids they lose it often so you get more and, and put more in the house as a backup and spare and then the kids wear it and take it off and then they lose it and then you put another one inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi regarding the colors of the levels of the heart Every color has a significance. Is there any significance to the color purple when it keeps popping up everywhere for us? Sure, purple is a is a energy and some sort of a not some sort of but an energy that comes from the hands. So it has its own reality of uh, an energy coming from the hands and if the person sees the lights of purple flowing over them then there's an abundance of rizq inshaAllah that opening upon them. But that doesn't mean now ask every, every possible <laughs> color combination and what does that mean? But purple very specific is, is understood but uh, inshaAllah, yeah. <clears throat> as salaamu alaykum uh, Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Could you kindly teach us about the seven levels of heavenly springs? We have an article on that and the, the reality of the seven springs inshaAllah. Go to the Nur Muhammad website and you can type in seven springs and then we go over and then maybe I can go over that tonight and we can talk about it tomorrow inshaAllah. <clears throat> But these are the, the fountains and the realities that begin to blossom within the heart of the believer because these are from the zamzam, right? So these are the realities of this month and the zamzam opening 
within the heart of the servant so that they understand that at level one the this fountain of abundance what it begins to open within the heart of the servant. But afterwards you can remind me on a text that we'll review and, and go over that article. Maybe we can talk about that tomorrow night inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the correct way and what to recite while trying to learn the use of nasma with our hands during meditation? The correct way, I think we have also an article on that on the power of the hands and the reality of Sufi meditation and you can get it on Nur Muhammad on how to open the energy of the hand, how to breathe. So these are all different types of meditation. The core is how to do the awrad and connect with the shaykh so that your connection is strong, breathing and bringing the energy of that connection, making your, your connection with the shaykh, asking to be dressed by the lights of the shaykh. And the next is then once you have a strong connection as your foundation then you're going to do some breathing and energy practices. One is an energy practice in which you breathe and that you want to feel like a fire of energy that's entering in with the breath. Once you've done your breathing practices and, and you go like a base, you first learn how to connect, you first learn how to make this strong connection with the shaykh that I'm nothing and I'm seeing you to be present. Once that connection becomes like commonplace for you, then you ask Sayyidi that I want to now dress and understand the breath and, and the power of the breath. This becomes the fuel for the ascension on how to open the power of the breath is to breathe with that connection. That I'm nothing and, and breathing the zikrahu, exhaling with zikrahu and keep breathing until you can feel like a fire and energy that entering into the chest and into the heart. Then the next practices of energies is then the movement of energy. Then once you made the madad, you made the connection, you understood how to do the breathing, then you begin to practice your energy in which you feel the energy and the heat within the hands and then your breathing and your movement is then synchronized. that you feel an energy on both hands and it's like a glue that it's bound and we're going to bring this nazma and this energy out with our breath. That as soon as you're pulling your hands away you're, you're feeling like you're stretching this energy out and that you're breathing and is synchronized with this movement. So you're, you're feeling this energy and as if your heart is sending this energy into the hands and then you're moving this energy. And as soon as you move this energy that you make it to be felt. You breathe and consciously focus on like a block of energy that's being held by the two hands. And that becomes stronger and stronger and you breathe that that energy is there. And then with your heart you keep focusing to make this energy more solid for you and more solid for you. And at the end of your meditation you ask that that light and that energy to be dressed upon yourself. So again continuously because it's already flowing but when you put your consciousness on it then you can now begin to use your senses to understand what's happening. So your, your sense of feeling and your sense of touch is going to become hypersensitive to feel that energy and that's important for you to begin to build that energy and later you build the energy and then visualize that you've put a whole sort of a bubble of energy around you and that energy becomes like a force of protection that shields you and go further and further. But that's all based on the foundation of the connection because through the connection the shaykhs will begin to inspire in those practices and begin to facilitate more energy so that the servant can feel it and begin to experience it. And through the connection with the shaykh is then the conveyance of knowledges and, and dialogue, that a dialogue from soul to soul begins to teach the servant at that level. But without the foundation of the shaykh then there are just empty practices, people feeling energies but that's not what the goal of it was. The goal was your foundation to be solid, that it's about connection, that feel the connection and I got that in everything. Once you have that connection 
you start that with everything. As soon as you're about to pray, you make that connection again, ask for the madad of the shaykh and then in his madad you're making salah. So that is always your imam, he's always present and I'm not present, I'm nothing. As soon as I sit for zikr I make the madad because I trained with it, asking for the madad that making intention for my, my zikr and for this majlis of Khatm al-Khawjigan or majlis of Sulli ala Nabi that I'm nothing, I'm nothing and I want his tajalli because I've already attuned myself, I gave all those talks before that I'm attuning myself with the shaykh, he has a vibration. If I negate myself then I can attune myself with his vibration, with his frequency. When I take myself to be nothing, his vibration begins to move me. And my experiences in the zikr then will be based on his vibration is moving and it's in the room, it's everywhere. As a result when I tune into it like we talked about the frequency of the radio. Every day you're meditating, meditating you're on that channel. So as soon as you make the madad you're on his channel and as a result that frequency is now flowing and then the student begins to have those experiences and tajallis and lights and energies. And they practice so they feel a force of energy coming then they have to ground themselves because the energy coming in is going to push out negative energies. So then they begin to breathe, they understand how to breathe, they understand that they're heating up and then they subtle they have to just ground their energy so that the positive force can come. If they see that you're not grounding well they're gonna blow your circuit. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's like electronics. If you send a huge circuit into the house what's gonna happen? You're going to pop the breaker because you put too much energy on. on so that's the same thing, they're gonna see if you're trained and you're user training so that you suddenly ground yourself with your connection. So that positive energy then more energy can begin to flow to that servant because they're grounding and the negativity is being pushed out. And they don't have to be in the presence of the shaykh at all, as a matter of fact it's a hindrance to be in the presence of the shaykh. So wherever they are they connect and that, that connection is a satellite connection, not a mobile phone connection. It means they can reach from the heavens to anywhere on this earth and beyond this earth, they can reach into the seven heavens. So it's just a matter of people training and connecting, training and connecting inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how long does it take to heal from the damage of things such as Jinn possession, curses, occult exposure. Is this something that can last a lifetime? Thank you for everything. InshaAllah that uh, everything is a, an experience. So how you view it is most important. That if we come into a world of submission, whatever we experience Allah wrote for us that experience. Either we fell by the experience and we went to the dark side because many people's lives will have horrific experiences. They fell subject to that experience and they went to the dark side. Those whom God's grace saved them from that then that experience now should be a part of your credentials, right? That's what makes you now. Maybe that's why God is saving you because why He saves you? Why don't He just throw you into the dark side, one more piece is, well what's going to be the difference if one more piece goes on there? So it means then maybe Allah wants something from me. Say, yeah, didn't you experience all those crazy things? Say, yeah. So now come to the force of the heavens with a, a yaqeen of demons because most people they haven't been to hell so they don't really know it exists. But people whom Allah has brought very down and very down places in their life it's like they have seen hell, they believe completely in it. They've met people who most likely are demons of hell, you don't need to convince them. So then these are experiences, that's their resume, that's why Allah put them through those difficulties. Now go through the light, train in the light and you're going to have certainty of what devils are.
person said, yeah, I, I, I met a few of them. Say, yeah, of course. So now you talk with certainty. You're not somebody who, oh, I've never seen anything of any hardship, I don't know what you're talking about. So somebody came to a shaykh and asked the shaykh, oh, I'm having problem with sweets, shaykh, what do I do? He said, hmm, come back in a week. I said, why? Just come back in a week. And the shaykh said, I don't have a problem with sweets. So he went and started eating lots of sweets and put himself in a difficulty of sweets to understand what, 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 what is this person facing. After a week, because this was a system the shaykh had understood, after a week of that difficulty he came back understood the difficulty this person is facing with that temptation, that desire, the inability to control their, their appetite and then gave a remedy based on that. So that's a, a hikmah. So Allah is not going to make good people go to the bad to come back and teach people but He gives them an experience on the bad side and saves them. And as a result of saving them now He sends them as a warner into communities. And that's why you see these people extremely tattooed up, big time gangsters, big time you know hoodlums that they were sitting with devils, eating with devils, they know exactly what a devil is capable of and Allah saved them. But well, then who do you think if they talk to is going to believe them? People in similar situations because those people think there's no hope for them, that how will God save them, how will they get out of this difficulty? And then Allah sends them a warner saying that, no, no I was saved, I understand exactly what you were doing and I'm here to tell you God will save you and God's compassion and mercy is, is unimaginable and God's grace is unimaginable. And it's a sin to think that Allah won't forgive someone. So alhamdulillah there's always a hikmah and a wisdom, it's just the perspective of, of how we see things inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So yesterday you spoke beautifully about the heart with which we connect and receive. What is the role of the crown of the head since we cover our heads? Alhamdulillah we have a talk on the reality of pyramids and again the understanding of electricity and energy. So modern is a wire, they understood that we have an energy that they're going to move from one point to the next point. Well they had to find ways of energy conductivity. How we get to move this energy without losing it? So they said, oh we're going to send it through copper. They tried plastic, the energy went nowhere. You put electrical line on plastic, it doesn't go. So eventually they found out, oh if we put the energy on copper, this energy flows complete but it'll go all in the air. So then they came and said, well why we don't make, you know, wirings and plastics and covering so all of their concepts was how to move energy from one point to the next point and how to seal it so that it's not lost. Well before that was the pyramid. They had a system on how sun would hit the water and release electrons. But how to capture that energy that's being released was a series of tunnels that the water would… the sun would hit immediately that water enters under the pyramid. And the pyramid was built as an insulation like a wire, specific stones and layered stones until the top is a specific kind of, I think they call it granite or limestone something that was based on energy. And it had to be insulated so that the energy that they're producing at the bottom is completely moving to the top. As a result of that energy. Then you now have the flow of the energy. But the most important part of this energy coming into the pyramid is then the tip of the pyramid which they call the capstone. If you control the capstone then you seal the entire energy, right? Because the energy is being produced from the bottom, brought into that system of the pyramid and they understood that the secret of that reality is on the cap of that pyramid. So then they had a very specific understanding for the capstone. 
because that seals the energy off. And now when you look at the pyramid there's no capstone, right? Somebody took off the capstones because they don't want that energy. They, they want energy that they can sell to people, they don't want anything free for the benefit of humanity. But the sunnah is the more advanced of this reality. That the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad then is the immensity of energy, right? So we are the pyramid that Prophet is giving to us is that build your energy, build this vibration that moving within you, don't let it to be lost, right? So as soon as you expose your, your, your body, what happens? Your energy now is being stolen. That's why the dress of modesty is an energy, is an energy reality, it's not a fashion statement. Anything exposed because these are very advanced understandings that you're giving to a, a period of time that didn't understand things. So Prophet's immensity of the sunnah is an eternal reality that when we're energy beings his teaching for us is that the eyes of somebody else can either send you energy or pull energy from you. So then when you're building all your energy, your clothing of modesty is a guard so that anyone looking at you is not zapping your energy from your skin. So when somebody looks at you and sees your, your skin parts then their hasad or their envy or their desire is what? The eyes are now able to either hit you if they have hasad that why your arm is good and I'm sick, why you, you're healthy and I'm sick or envy, oh wow and then send all their contamination. So these are extremely advanced energy movements and when the flow of energy is coming from your feet means that we gave talks that the flow of energy is coming. The practices, the zikr, the salah, everything that Prophet brought for us is also an energy upon the heart. So this whole flow of energy then are different energy points. And the capping of that insan and the perfection of that insan is then going to be with their capstone. That's why the, the top of the pyramid brings the energy of insan, brings the tajalli and brings everything into the perfection, the sunnah seals it and then now that person is like a, a wire that they're conveying Divinely energies, they're not losing an excessive amount of energy so then they're always net positive. Remember on the regulator talk, the shaitan is trying to take our regulator down so that you don't reach your 90 million volts. 90 trillion volts that you have and science agrees that 1.4 volts for every cell and 70 million or 70 trillion cells. So shaitan's whole desire is take it down, take their energy down, why I'll tell them to take their clothes off. Well all the energy will be dissipated, your legs are showing, your arms are showing, your whole body is showing and tell them to take the capstone off. That's why you don't see the pyramids with the stone because they don't want that power to be seen or understood by people. So then they tell people, uncover your head. If that's all the power of your energy is being built onto your body and escaping through your skull and this is the soft point of the baby's head, that point on the head all the energy that's coming is escaping the body. So when they don't cover their head. What happens? The energy is flowing out and the shaitans are sitting on the head pulling that energy off and feeding from that energy. From the belly button and from the toe, there are three points in which the soul's movement is moving on the insan. Through their big toe, energy can come to their soul and their soul can move through that, through their belly button and through the soft point in the crown of their head. So safeguarding these points then was the immense sunnah. So the showing of men and women of their belly button is forbidden.
That's why the sunnah even if they're going to swim they have to wear a shirt for men so that the belly button not to show. Why? Because the energy is going to be pulled from that person's being. The process of the, the feet, we know then the, the difficulty of, of negativity that moves upon the feet. And that's a given by walking this earth, the immensity of negativities that are coming upon people. And then the sunnah of covering for men and for women is to, is to capture that energy, safeguard against every type of negativity that shaitan is putting upon people and draining them so that they are actually have no more energy, they're just running on negativity. As a result of being negative then they become possessed and they become agents for shaitan and easily possessed. So this is all about energy, it's not a fashion statement but the immense wisdom of Prophet to safeguard energy and energy beings and, and energy fighting and energy healing. So the one who conquers their energy and they rise to a positive. So that shaitan is not taking them to a negative charge, now they have million volts, they have 10 million volts, they have 100 million volts, up to 70 trillion or 90 trillion volts of energy coming through them. So imagine something such a powerful creation, of course Allah gave all of its safeguards. Then imagine the immensity of the ring, the sunnah ring under the flag of Sayyidina Muhammad That ring gave, given to Sayyidina Sulaiman commanded all the jinn, the ifrit and malaika under his command. What do you think from the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad in last days that when he energizes and powers every sunnah will become its reality for the muhibbeen because they did it, they followed it for the love of Prophet Then what, what do you think their ring is going to be activated? It doesn't have to be activated now, it has a power now that scares many creatures and has many different openings. But what do you think he's going to open on days of difficulty? He said, you think if I gave to Sayyidina Sulaiman you haven't seen anything yet. What he gives to Muhammadiyoon of an authority just from the sunnah of their ring because they carried it with the ishq and with the love of Prophet If you think the asa of Sayyidina Musa did miracles and became dragons what do you think the asa of Sayyidina Muhammad comes? Which is what key Sayyidina Mahdi is, is going to open up all the sunnahs of Prophet With just Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem for these muhibeen and ashiqeen whom they follow through love. As a result of their love Allah will reward their love and their faith becomes real with dajjal time. Right? That's the immensity is that your faith will become real. So then this becomes an immense dragon. This has an immense power and authority. Now we're in an upside, upside down world. Someone else looks like they're in charge. But when Allah flips this world and ignites this reality then the Muhammadan kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That Prophet Wasallam's kingdom comes upon this earth, then alhamdulillah for those whom they followed with ishq and with love. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun ala mursaleen <coughs> wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.